Right. Um, oh, I cannot move. Oh, yeah, I can. So, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Dario from Mayara Cloud. We are a UK based company. Um, I'm actually trying to run away from winters in general for the rest of my life. And that's where I'm in Singapore. We are actually trying to get new customers here. And we already have a couple of perspective ones. This is what I did all my life. And at a certain point, I just leave all um, any sort of contracting or, or contracted job and, and, and found my own company. And I got a lot of time to do all those kind of certifications and stuff. So I, I, I'm presenting this story uh, that happened actually something like three, four weeks ago. Uh, so uh, it's, it's very, very recent. This was the client that had the the, the, well, the full set of the application is already running full kind of serverless because it's all uh, AWS Lambda, Fargate, so on and so forth. But they had a, a piece of the infrastructure, a piece of the application that it was running on ECS. EC, pure EC, so ECS for you that don't know, they've got the Fargate, which is like they run containers on AWS on magical servers, and they just run OK. But they have some limitations, like the space, and you cannot serve volumes, stuff like that. This new application in development, it was running on that kind of ECS. And it was just on development. It was not facing the public. But then there was an audit from the government. And they need to show the application working properly. And the application need to be public. But it had no authentication. Just that little bit, it was not present. The, the rest of the application had authentication already in the back end. So they had like an authentication API based on, on, on web, uh, JSON web tokens, but not this bit. So they came to us like, do whatever you can, do whatever needs to be done, but make it uh, work in production, live, and that it's able to pass an audit. And so we came there, and, and we used this thing uh, uh, the guys had Band lab they presented is called that they are using as well. It's called Lambda Edge. This thing is just um, the best thing that has happened to my life in the last like three weeks. <laughs> so yeah, it's super cool. Um, I I, I watch a video on YouTube or something like that or a tweet from someone who did some uh, basic HTTP authentication using this, and it was not good enough for me, but it was like super promising. So. This is what I actually needed. Uh, I needed the something, in this case, Lambda Edge, to authenticate the headers or to check if the headers they were having a, a proper embedded uh, token with authentication on it. And, and so that I could pass it somehow, uh, like with a proxy, a web proxy to the, to the backend, which is normal uh, Java somewhere. And, and then I also needed to to do all those things that we all do, like uh, catching static assets and, and JavaScript in CloudFront. CloudFront, any other CDN. We, we're actually also using multi-cloud. Someone asked who's using multi-cloud. We're, we're using multi-cloud. And, and so how to do that in, in AWS? Well, obviously, using Lambda. And I'm not going to present Lambda again, because it's just been already very nicely done. But yeah, we, we pass through all this process of doing all those things manually back in the day. We don't do that anymore. We just run things in Lambda. If something doesn't work, it's AWS fault, not, not mine. <laughs> as simple as that. I, I, I just make things to, to go into their specifications. It's their fault from there. Lambda at Edge, it's super cool because it's, it's moving your Lambda um, execution to the edges. So there are basically edges, which are like kind of just data centers, API entry points, call it as, as you want, all over the world. And they are moving physically um, the code execution into those edges. So it's very fast. It's super fast. And it's applying, uh, allowing you to do logic into those, um, into those edges before passing it to anywhere else to the origin, which could be an S3 bucket. It could be your current um, legacy application, like in my case, living somewhere dodgy, like in ECS on, based on EC2. 
So that was super cool, because we, we didn't want to basically redeploy everything. How, how, how is the backend deploy? I already spoiled myself. I told you that it's on ECS, but it was on EC2, and I was feeling quite dodgy because I've been on EC2. Nobody likes EC2 anymore, because EC2 is super old school. If someone comes to me and tells me like the whole application is running on EC2, I just run away. It's like, good for you. Come back to the future. And I also saw this thing. This is super awesome. So the guys at AWS, for whatever reason, well, this is actually pretty cool. This is good for legacy stuff. If you are unfortunate like me and you have to work with bands and, uh, banks and, and things like that, like very, very huge legacy companies, AWS offered you to run EC2 on-premises in their fancy boxes, the, the storage, how is it called? Snow something? Snowball. Snowball. So you can run EC2 on-premises. It's like going back to, I don't know, 1982. <laughs> <laughs> this is my backend, OK? This is where I'm running, unfortunately, on containers that they have to run on EC2, which is called ECS slash classic or something like that. I, I, I'm running 90% of the stuff in ECS Fargate, and I consider that to be serverless, because I just don't care. Yes, I do have to do the container, not me, it's Jenkins or someone, but it's still running on, on, on AWS uh, backend, but not ECS on EC2. ECS on EC2 means that you have to provision some EC2 machines that they are running the ECS agent, that's the only bit that you have to worry about. It's already too much for me. <laughs> and this is how it's run the rest of the application, which I'm not presenting here tonight. It's, it's Fargate, which is super cool. If you are not using it and, and you have to do legacy stuff like I do, you have to run code that someone else wrote. Because I cannot have this Willy Blanda super awesome thing. I cannot deploy stuff. The, the, what I do is to go into developers, try to tell them, do it right, do it right. But it's always another company. So I have to get that and put it in the cloud somehow. If you have to do that like me, go for Fargate. If you are using other cloud providers, there are other super cool things there too. There are other cloud providers that they have similar things five years ago. And they didn't, they didn't for whatever reason, market it so well. But AWS is much better than that. So. Um, I still call Fargate uh, serverless, even though it's Docker. Deploying the whole thing is not any easy. It's not any easy. <laughs> it's like you have to basically uh, convince the developers to make the whole thing again a little bit more your way, a little bit more native cloud or cloud native. And, and whenever something is broken in one of the thousand AWS services, it's, it's gonna, you're going to realize that, yeah, you are now hitting the, the 15 minutes newest Lambda timeout, or you're, you're just using too much memory. Someone is uh, using some kind of function that is not in the standard environment, so you have to pack it into Lambda. I don't want to do my own packing. It it's, it's kind of takes a lot of time. Uh, we do all these things, the, let's say, to the best of our um, expertise or, or our abilities. So we always use these kind of things. We don't use some. We use some in the past. It's kind of cool, but we still old school. We do everything in Terraform for consistency. We do uh, Jenkins. We don't allow any developer. We don't allow any uh, SRE, any kind of engineer to touch anything from the laptop. You are just uh, deploying your whole thing with a click of your mouse. Otherwise, you'll fire. And you have to repeat that again and again and again until you get the uh, green screen and full stop. That's the only way, and it's super tedious, that's the only way that uh, the whole thing is going to be consistent and it's going to work. To be fair, we have like tons of Jenkins jobs that they are super cool. You can test your stuff from a branch. You can do all those kind of things that the developers of the companies they need. Most of them, they don't think that's possible. It's actually quite easy. You can do absolutely whatever you want with these kind of very few tools, like Terraform, Jenkins, Spinnaker, and a couple of more things. If you are using containers or Kubernetes, just yeah, attend another meeting. And 
yeah, uh, deploying specifically uh, Lambda at Edge, it's got a couple of problems. And, and, and this has taken at least uh, one, one full day of my life. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I hate it. Problem of doing CloudFront is that every time you do a change in CloudFront, it has to go all over the world. It goes places. And it takes a long time. It takes something like, in the past, it was 20 minutes. Today, it's like 5 to 15, 17 minutes. For me to wait 17 minutes to be sure that I change, it's, it's actually up and running. It's like forever. I just cannot wait 17 minutes for absolutely anything. <laughs> and when you do a change in CloudFront, you have to wait for that. So you deploy your Lambda in Virginia, in, 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 in the central AWS or the, or, or the original AWS um, region. And then you test it there. You kind of fake how is it going to be uh, behind CloudFront. It works okay theoretically, but to, to, actual, to do the actual testing, you have to deploy it all over the world and, and, and just wait a lot of time. It's pain in the ass. It looks a little bit like that. The, the, the small ones are the lambdas in the edge. <laughs> and this happens again and again and again. And, and it, it doesn't matter how hard you try, it's going to be like that. It has to be everything fully automated. It has to be everything absolutely serverless. It's just going to go wrong a thousand times. So uh, I made it very short. What was that like? Less than 10 minutes. This is it. This is what we did. Uh, that was something that they asked uh, us to do like within two weeks. It took us something like three days because we had that very good luck of having absolutely all the tools already there. We, we didn't have to do much. Just adapt a couple of um, a couple of lines of code that they already have for the backend. We put them in the Lambda, and then we move it to this Lambda edge. And the whole application has switched to, to this new way of authenticating in the edge rather than authenticating within the backend. And the whole application, it runs, you, you can call me crazy, but it runs unauthenticated within AWS. It's everything SSL and everything is uh, secure. But from the CloudFront to the origin, uh, it goes only with this JSON Web Secure Token, uh, JSON Web Token. And, and it just works OK. They just switch the whole thing. And, and it passes the government auditory and all those things. So that's me. I know I didn't make it any technical, but I'm, I'm good for questions and answers, and having a year afterwards, happy to ask, to, to answer any kind of technical question. So, questions? Do you use Terraform to deploy uh, Lambda functions? So yeah. You can do that? Or I don't you, can, you can do anything with Terraform. So first of all, with Terraform, you can do uh, local providers and, and, and local data sources. So you can basically call uh, Python, Go, whatever you use. And, and just use the AWS API or any cloud provider API and do whatever you want. What we do for Lambda is the easiest of the thing. We just uh, locally, but it, everything, everything is done through the Terraform apply command or whatever you want to call it. We just uh, have a, a, a custom local resource that is zipping the, the, it's zipping the, the code, whatever is going to go in the Lambda. If there is any change, the MD5 sum is going to change of the zip file. And then Terraform is going to detect that that change. That's going to trigger the, the rest of the Terraform stuff, which is basically uh, upload the local zip file to Lambda. That, that's already in Terraform in the, in the AWS provider. Uploading the zip uh, file to Lambda and, and publish the new version. So yeah, it's quite, it's quite easy, actually. And, and it works wonders. Some, some people in my own company, they like to go the S3 way. Uh, I do it locally because I don't do anything locally. It's all in that Jenkins thing, which is on outer scaling groups, replicated, and all that stuff. Um, some people, they just do it on S3. They have the Lambda code on S3. And when there is a change, they detect it from S3. And, and they deploy it from S3 into Lambda. But yeah, you can. It works wonders. You can make coffee with Terraform. <laughs> yes? Uh, yeah. Fargate, it's pretty expensive versus ECS, it's on EC2. Fargate is, 
they just recently reduced the price, but before it was quite expensive. Yes and no. So Fargate and most of the serverless or all of the microservices in AWS, they are pretty expensive if you if you do a simple comparison of horsepower against your EC2 legacy 2.0 on-prem thing. Um, if you do an actual proper use or usage of, of Fargate, you are normally saving money. In, in, in this case, for example, um, the way of flexibility that we could do in AWS uh, EC2 auto-scaling, it was way, way less than the flexibility that you can do in, in Fargate. In Fargate, you can do things like I want to use a minimum of, I think is one-fourth of a CPU, and something like 200 and um, like one, one fourth of gigabyte as well. That's like the minimum you can have. And then it auto scales fastly because it's on, on Docker servers somewhere in AWS. It auto scales fastly to whatever you want. So, yes, the CPU and memory per second is more expensive. It's way, way more expensive in Fargate than in EC2. Well, not way more expensive, but it's more expensive. But if you make your application to scale properly, and it's actually only responding to certain HTTP requests that they're already behind CloudFront, they're already behind cache, they are, uh, cache content, they're already behind, um, they're safe from DOS attacks and stuff like that. You are going to have uh, the optimal number of hits to your backend, and it's going to be super flexible. So at the end of the day, you are actually saving money. At least we have like three or four clients that they are using Fargate intensively. They, they are spending less than before migrating into Fargate. And before it was already ECS. It was just running ECS on EC2. And just that small change of not running it in your own EC2 machines, yeah. it's saving a lot of money for them. Cool. Last question. No last question. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you everyone.